Salvete discipuli. In this tutorial video, we will study some select sentences from the story Remedium Astrologi, in which, after Barbalus has been seriously wounded, we will begin to explore how we can help him recover. Formio, qui servos vulneratos sanare solebat, tunicam suam sciderat, partem tunicae circum umerum barbeli deligauerat. Okay, so when you're translating, um, just make sure you really can stop at any period, colon, or semicolon. What you know will follow after is going to be another complete sentence. So sometimes something might be presented to you and you think, wow, that's a long sentence. And it's not really a sentence. So we're going to translate just up to here. So the number one thing we want to do is look for the main verb. Okay, so remember, we're going to sometimes have clauses. Okay, so... This qui right here, see, this is actually a clause inside the sentence telling us more about formio. But the main sentence is everything outside that clause. So the main verb is skiderat. Okay, so locate the main verb based on the dictionary. Okay, so if you go to the dictionary, you look and you find... Oh no, skiderat is not there. But here's the thing, you have to remember, just because the form that you have in your text doesn't seem to be in the dictionary, you have to very commonly run over to this third item, this third principal part. This is where you're going to find, like this root here, skied, okay? This is where you're going to find it. So in the present tense, skindo means I tear, I tear up. But then in the perfect tense, skidi, I tore up. Now, that's not what we have here. This erat ending, of course, makes it pluperfect. So, he, she, it had torn something. Okay? Now, let's see if there's a subject for that verb. In isolation, skiderat would mean he, she, or it had torn. Don't look inside the clause. Remember, the clause is its own entity, okay? It's its own little mini sentence, okay? Outside the clause, look, we have formio. Formio is our subject. Formio had torn. Now, let's see if there are any clauses that should be handled now, okay? So the issue is sometimes you're going to have a clause that you're going to decide shouldn't be introduced in your translation until the end, okay? So formio qui, okay, formio who. It looks like we maybe do want to translate this now. Formio who, who had what? Solebat, was accustomed, okay? Was accustomed to do an action or used to do an action. And it's going to complete its action with this infinitive here, sanare. Formio, who was accustomed to heal, okay? So what's left in the clause is going to be our direct object. Here is whom he was accustomed to heal. He was accustomed to heal servos vulneratos, wounded slaves, okay? So Formio, who was accustomed to heal wounded slaves, had torn. What had he torn? Well, the only thing left in the sentence that we haven't dealt with is tunicam suam, okay? Had torn his tunic, okay? So it's an emergency. They have to get this blood flow stopped. And, you know, maybe if you have the luxury of, you know, having like actual like bandages around you, use those. If you don't, you have to use whatever you have. So in this case, he, he like took off his tunic and he tore it and he's like making a makeshift bandage. Okay, moving on. Partem tunicae circum umerum barbeli deligauerat. Okay, deligauerat, again, a pluperfect tense verb. He, she, or it had tied. Is there a nominative subject in this sentence? No, so we're just going to assume this is referring to formio. Okay, so he had tied partem. This is your accusative direct object of the verb. Part of what? Part tunicae of the tunic. That is a genitive singular ending. Where had he tied part of the tunic? Kirkum, around. Around what? Umerum, the shoulder. 
Whose shoulder? Barbeli, the shoulder of Barbalus. This is a genitive singular ending for a second declension. This is a genitive singular ending of a first declension noun. Servi, qui barbilum portabant, ubi cubiculum intraverunt in lectum eum leniter posuerunt. They put. Okay, so this is your main verb. They put. So let's, let's again use this translation methodology. Okay, do we have any clauses here? Look, yeah, here's a clause. Qui barbilum portabant. Okay, that's a clause. Um, and look, we have another clause, ubi, okay, so the main sentence is everything outside that, ubi cubiculum intraverunt, okay, so servi is going to end up being the subject of our main verb posuerunt, okay, so it's the slaves put, okay, this is why it's so important when you're translating Latin, read the whole sentence, think through the issue of what clauses there are, okay, so in this case, the slaves put. Now, let's go ahead and deal with some of these clauses. Okay, the slaves qui, the slaves who, the slaves who portabant, were carrying. We need a direct object, it's going to be barbalum. The slaves who were carrying barbalus. Now, our main verb is still hanging out there, but we have another clause to deal with. Ubi cubiculum intraverunt. When. Okay, when intraverunt, when they entered, when they entered what? Here's the object of intraverunt, when they entered the bedroom, okay? So, the slaves who were carrying barbalus, when they entered the bedroom, put, we need an object, there it is, eum. They put him. Now, they put him where and in what manner? That's going to be in lectum is where, and leniter is an adverb that's going to tell you the manner or fashion with which they put him somewhere gently, leniter. They put him gently in lectum, on the bed. Duai anquilae propelectum stabant lacrimantes. They were standing. There's our main verb, okay? Does that main verb have an object or a subject? We look for some nominatives. We're going to need nominative plurals because bont is a plural ending. And indeed, duai anquilai is our subject. Two slave girls were standing, okay? What's left over is where they were standing and an action they were doing while they were standing there. And that's going to be expressed with this, our present active participle. Remember, the present active participle has an NS in the nominative singular and an NT followed by third declension endings, okay? So just like mater becomes matres, lacrimans in the nominative singular, it would become in the nominative plural here, lacrimantes. They were standing propelectum, N-S-N-T equals I-N-G, crying. The two slave girls were standing near the bed, crying. Necesse est vobis inquit magnum numerum aranearum quaerere. It is necessary, remember we learned this construction difficile est, it is difficult for someone to do something. So it is necessary for you, plural, he said, and the action it is necessary for you to do is expressed in an infinitive. It is necessary for you to look for, quaerere. To look for what? We need a, an accusative object, magnum numerum. It is necessary for you to look for a large number. Aranearum means of spider webs. Okay, this is a genitive plural ending. Um, spider webs actually contain one of the highest concentrations of vitamin K that you can find in the natural world. And in the ancient times, they knew that something in it, we now know it's vitamin K, something in spiderwebs actually has a strong astringent quality. 
And so they knew that if you have a wound that is bleeding and you want to like make that tissue kind of, uh, you know, kind of tighten up so that you slow the flow of blood, spider webs, believe it or not, you know, the trade off between like putting something that might not be completely sanitary in that wound versus making the blood flow stop, you know, you basically, you know, you have to stop the blood. And so putting spider webs inside a wound was uh, was known in ancient times as as a medical technique. Ubi sanguis effluit nihil melius est quam araneae. When blood flows, um, effluit really means to flow out, okay? When blood flows, nihil melius est, nothing is better, okay? Now, melius is the neuter form of the word better, okay? The nominative singular of a masculine or feminine would be melior, okay? But for a neuter, and nihil is like by definition a neuter, Nothing is better than spider webs, okay? And so, you know, nothing is better than, or there is nothing better than, you can feel free to tweak your translation however you like, as long as it remains a good grammatical English translation. <laughs> 